Hi everyone, it's Joel here again, and today what we're going to look at is Twirl Art. This is a grade 6 project that I did in Photoshop with the kids. Uh, before I go any further, I have to credit this to Dick McClelland over at lynda.com. Uh, this recipe, if you like, is pretty much straight through, uh, straight from him. Um, I haven't really made many, if any, changes, um, but I just wanted to present it to you, so I, I have to give credit, Deek McClelland, he came up with this and it looks amazing. I think Twirl that has been around for a while, but um, these steps are his, so I just wanted to say that. Okay, so over here in Photoshop I've got a picture of some flowers, and it really doesn't matter what photo that you start with, what you need is something that's got a lot of vibrant colours to get the best effect. Okay, so I'm going to right click on this background layer and the first thing I'm going to do is convert it to a smart object. Once I've done that, all filters that I apply to it can be changed later on down. So it's not uh, set in stone, anything that I do from now on, which can be quite helpful. Okay, so I'm going to go to the filter menu and I'm going to go to blur and radial blur. And when I do that, I need to make sure that it's at zoom and that the amount is 100%. So I'm going to take that all the way to the end there and I want a draft copy of this and I want a draft because I want to do this particular effect three times over and it does take a while to sort of go through so draft and then draft and then I'm going to do best at the end so let's see what a draft looks like okay so there's the blur applied you can see it's quite noisy but that's okay for now let's do the same thing again filter and you can see up here my first option is exactly what I just did, that's always the last filter that I applied, so let's just click on that. Uh, zoom and draft, 100%, that's great. So further blurred there, and then we're going to do it one more time, radial blur, uh, but this time I'm going to change to best and press OK. And that will take um, a few seconds to do, but once it does, you can see it looks a lot more polished, a lot more high def, and a lot better quality. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to create a twirl. So I'm going to go to Filter and Distort and Twirl. And what I'm looking for is a positive number between 1 and 500. Now, this angle can go all the way to 999, but for reasons that I'll explain later, I need something that's less than 500. So I might go for something like, um, let's do 450. I'm just going to type in 450 for my angle and press OK and then see how that looks. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? That looks amazing, but we're not stopping there. There's a lot more to do. Let's go to Filter this time and Pixelate, and we're going to choose Mesotint, and this is going to really brighten up the colors in a minute. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to choose Long Lines. So that's Mesotint Long Lines, and press OK, and oh my god, it looks awful. Awful, but that's okay. That's because this effect has been put on right at the top of the stack, right after all the other effects. What I want to do is bring that down so the effect uh, does it to the, the picture of the flowers before any of the blurs. So let's drag that down to the bottom of the stack and let it go. And it'll take a second because it needs to do it. And that makes a big difference. If I turned off that effect, let's just give it a second to turn off, you'll see the difference. Turning it off, you can see it's a lot paler. Um, turning it on again makes it a bit more vibrant. So turning it on again, waiting for a second, that's great, fantastic. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy. So I'm going to press Control J to copy this layer. So I've got layer zero copy here. And I'm going to double click this twirl and I'm going to change the value of this copied layer here. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the angle to double the amount. So double 450 is 900, and now you see why I wanted something less than 500. So I'm going to double it, which makes it 900, and press OK. I'm going to double click the mesotint, and I'm going to change the mesotint to coarse dots. I'm going to press OK and see what that does. Give it a sec, nice. You can see all those strokes very nicely. And I'm going to change the blend mode to lighten, so we can see both layers nicely, um, comes through very well. Okay, so that looks really good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse all the filters. Now I could click this little arrow and click this little arrow, but a little trick is to hold down the Alt button and click one of them. Both layers are collapsed like that, that looks good. I'm going to shift click this bottom one and Control J to copy both of those layers. 
Okay, so just give it a second, get Photoshop to catch up. And I've copied, now I've got copy two, copy three. These two layers I want grouped into a folder. So I'm going to right click here, and I'm going to choose group from layers. And I'm going to call this flipped and press OK. All right, so I've got my original two layers here. I've got the top copy of those two layers in a folder called flipped. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform the, that folder um, that has those two layers. I'm going to go to Edit Transform, and I'm going to choose Flip Horizontal. I'm going to click on that. We'll see how that looks. Give it a sec. There we go. And I'm going to change the blend mode, blend mode through that to Darken. There we go. So now we've got this nice effect that has these blending through each other. And that looks really nice. Okay, I'm going to open up this folder by clicking the little arrow. And I'm going to open up this um, layer here by clicking here. Now I'm going to double click this twirl. Double click. Open up that option. And now you can see why I chose to start it with smart filters. This wouldn't be possible without smart being a smart object or using smart filters. And I'm going to keep the number as 900, but I'm going to reverse it by making it negative 900. And I'm going to press OK. All right, that looks interesting. And now I'm going to open up the second one here. That's the second one down here. Double click that 12. And this is the original number that we had, which was um, 450. And I'm going to put a negative sign there to reverse that as well and press OK. There we go. So now this is pretty much the end of my twirl art. It looks pretty awesome. Um, I think we just need to increase the contrast a little bit. So I'm just going to go up to my layers, click on that first layer that I've got there. And I'm going to go over here to my adjustments. And I'm going to choose brightness and contrast. And I'm going to crank up that contrast all the way to 100. And I need to make sure that that doesn't just apply to what's in the fl flipped folder, but applies to the whole project. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it. And this can be tricky, but you just need that line so it's right at the top of the stack, just like mine is. And that's made a big difference. Let's see what it looks like with it off and what it looks like with it on. Okay, so I say to my students that I want this to be an option. I want you to do it, but then I want you to turn it off or on depending on your picture and depending on what you think looks best. I actually think it looks really good with it on, so I'm going to keep it on. All right, and that's it. That's how you do flip. Uh, and so that's it. That's how you do twirl art in Photoshop. And a big thanks to Dick McClelland, who came up with this and came up with all the steps. Um, I think my video is quite a bit shorter than his. I don't quite explain every single thing the way that he did. Um, but hopefully I didn't do it too fast and you were able to follow along. I did this in two lessons. Uh, we pretty much got up to the stage where we copied the first layer. So there was two layers and that's when we stopped and then we carried it over to the next lesson. So um, some of these look absolutely beautiful. In fact, all of them look absolutely beautiful. It doesn't matter what picture that you use, but something with vibrant colors do tend to work best. So thank you very much and good luck.